Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be sublimating this apron. This is a really quick and easy project. I think it would be really great for the kids for when they're doing their art projects or helping in the kitchen or even for me. This would fit me. This is only four dollars and it's from Heat Transfer Warehouse and remember I'm having a all during the month of March we're celebrating Heat Transfer Warehouse's 11th birthday. So all during the month of, month of March if you comment on any of my videos that feature Heat Transfer Warehouse products you will be entered to win one of 11 prize packs from Heat Transfer Warehouse. So make sure you leave a comment in the description below the video. And by the way, for those of you who have commented on the earlier videos, I have notified or posted the winners next to your comment or replied to your comments, and only one has claimed their prize. And I've already posted six of the 11 winners. So make sure that you check your comments or your YouTube notifications or however you get your replies on YouTube to make sure that you're claiming those prizes. So let's get started sublimating this apron. So here we are in Creative Studio. The first thing we're going to do is click on Start Creating. And right here in the Search Blanks window, we're going to type in Apron. And we're going to choose this adult apron right here. Here is our image of the apron that we're going to be making. So the next thing we want to do is click on My Galleries. We need to get our image. So we're going to click on Galleries, My Images, and we're going to click on Upload. I've already uploaded what we're going to put on this, but we'll do it again. So we click Upload. And then we're going to click upload again. You're going to navigate to where the image is that you want to use. Or you can design your own right in Creative Studio. You don't have to use an uploaded image. Once you see your image, click save. And here it is. So you can see it's right over here in our window. I'm just going to click on it and there it is. So I need to resize this. And I want to change this from millimeters to inches. We're going to click right there and I want to make this about eight inches. I measured my apron and I want it to set right up here. And for my particular apron, it needs to be about eight inches. So I'm just going to make eight. Right there. So I'm mine's at 7.97 by 7.22 inches. So that's perfect for what I need. All I have to do is click print. It's going to open up my print settings window. You're going to see the printers. I'm going to switch this to my SG500. Uh, it's going to print from page or from tray one. The page size is going to be US letter and it automatically ticks the mirror button for me. You want to make sure whenever you have text or something that needs to be in a specific direction that it is always mirrored. And we're going to be printing on polyester. So we're going to change that. I'm going to put the text print R paper in the printer. And I'm going to leave everything else as is. So we're going to click print. Once you see this message that your print has been successfully queued, you can click OK. Now we're going to wait for that print manager to open up. Sometimes it's hidden behind your window, so you might want to move this to see if it's behind it. But I find that I can usually just click the print manager icon on the bottom and that will open it up if it's there, but we'll wait for it to pop up here. There it is. All right, so everything is set up for us. Let's see how it looks. And there it is. You can see it fitting on an eight and a half by 11 paper. That's exactly what I wanted. It's just under eight inches and it has the image mirrored for us. That's what we want. So we are going to go ahead and click print. So you can see our image has started to print. So while that's printing, we're going to go ahead and make sure that this has been lint rolled and we are ready to go. You always want to lint roll your projects just so that you don't get any interference with your transfer tape. So I'm just going to use a simple lint roller and I'm just down here on my desktop, just lightly going to lint roll this just to make sure that we've got all that lint and anything that could cause interference with our transfer off of the area. So I have the heat press heat it up to or preheating to 400 degrees. I've got the timer set on 40 seconds. While it's preheating, I'm going to go ahead and give my apron a quick press just to preheat it. That will take out any moistures that happen to be in that fabric, take out any wrinkles and just get it prepared to be pressed. I have a small pressing pillow that happens to fit right under the area that we're going to be pressing. There are some seams on here and I just want to make sure that I get a really nice press. If you don't have a pressing pillow, I have a video on how to 
make your own pressing pillows very inexpensively. You can also buy them online or you could just take a towel and fold it up a couple of times just so that you have a nice flat area that's going to raise that printed area off of your press. So I'm just going to lay this down again, just making sure that those seams are hanging off of the pillow and it's straight. We're just giving it a quick pre-press. I'm going to protect it with some parchment paper and just give it a quick press, maybe five, 10 seconds. Another thing I want to tell you about sublimation is when you're sublimating, make sure that you don't have your press so tight that you're squishing that down because that can distort your image and cause some blurry um, results. So I have mine on a, see how easy that is to open? I actually probably could go a little bit tighter, but you don't want to have to like really, really push it. It doesn't need to be that tight to get a good image. So we've got that done. I'm gonna leave that up here. While this is preheating, we're going to grab our image. Trying to keep this from sliding off the desk here. There we go. So here is our image. You can say it's slightly muted. That's totally normal. Once the heat activates that ink, it will become vibrant. Again, I'm using a sublimation printer. You cannot do this with a inkjet printer. This is a sublimation printer. The magic is in the ink. I'm using sublimation paper, but I have found that you can also use copy paper. It works almost as well. There's maybe a slight difference. If you put them side by side, you can tell a slight difference, but if you didn't have them side by side, you probably would never notice. Um, this is the text print R paper. I do really like this paper. I have it, so I'm going to use it. But again, you can use a multi-purpose copy paper. I find that I get a lot of questions when I say that, what kind of paper, what brand. I buy any brand, but I find the ones that are um, good for laser are a little bit better, give you a little bit better results. All right, so I have my image and I have my apron. Rather than move the camera again, I'm just going to tape this down right into place, right on the front of the apron. So let me do that. You wanna make sure that you use some heat transfer tape you do not want to use scotch tape that will melt on your project and that's never a good idea. So I have some heat transfer tape. I'll link all of this in the description below the video. Um, there are so many different kinds of tape. There's so many different kinds of um, our brands. They all work about the same. So this one I think I got off of Amazon, but I'll link, I'll link it. The text print R paper is again from Heat Transfer Warehouse. Heat Transfer Warehouse also has their own um, heat transfer tape, so you can use that. So I have the image face down taped on the top of my apron, so you can see it like that. We don't want it to move or anything. I'm going to go ahead and place it. Actually, I'm going to leave that on there just in case any ink goes through. I'm going to protect my pillow. So I'm going to put this back up on the press. Again, making sure that it's, that pillow is underneath so that the seams are falling off the edge. Okay, so I've got that all lined up on the press. The paper is face down, but it's on the top of the sandwich. And then I'm gonna put a piece of butcher paper over the top. Again, you wanna make sure that you always protect that platen so that you don't get any ink that might infect your next image. So let's go ahead and press this 400 degrees, 40 seconds. So time's up. All right, so you wanna remove your butcher paper. Again, if you see any sign of the image on your butcher paper, make sure you throw that away, don't reuse it. And let's, oh, it's so cute. So here is my image after it's been pressed. And check out how cute this is. It's really bright in my room, so I don't know if you can see how vibrant this is. Let me try to get it up to the camera. But this turned out so cute. So this image is available for my Patreon users. You get it, you got it free. And just I think last week I posted this in our Patreon group. You can have this SVG free, but this apron would be perfect for anything. You could put a child's name, you could put their favorite character, you could put, you know, uh, world's best dad, grilling dad, whatever you want to put on there. Super cute, really easy project, fun gift to make. I think it would be really cute to put maybe on their monogram 
for their uh, name down here. That would be cute. So again, this apron is available at Heat Transfer Warehouse. I do have a link in the description below. It is an affiliate link. If you use that link, I appreciate it. That helps my help support my channel. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, never stop making. Bye-bye. Just a quick reminder to enter the giveaway for the sublimation gift packs from Heat Transfer Warehouse uh, by leaving a comment in the description below. And also check out, if you've left comments on the previous videos, make sure that you check your notifications because you may have already won a prize pack. I've had five winners that have not claimed their prizes. I will give it until the 15th of this month. If the prizes are not claimed, I will have to move on and choose uh, replacement winners. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye.